right, so I actually found some engine information quite easily. Um, this engine is rated for 3600 RPM, which I don't have any way of checking that right now, but I'm quite certain it's not running that fast. Um, so we'll, uh, I'm going to adjust it up a little bit for now and just take it out and do a little bit of test driving and just see if it changes the way it performs. Uh, but I'm not going to get too carried away with it uh, just because I don't want to overdo it. Um, what else did I learn? Uh, this is a 1995 model engine, so I don't believe uh, that it's possible that this is the original. Um, just because I think this skid loader was built in the early 80s. Uh, but I, I, I'd have to do a little bit of digging on that to find out. Unfortunately, uh, it's very hard to find any information on these machines at all. Um, I'm not really sure, you know. I work for a, a Gale dealer, and Gale and Mustang are owned by the same company uh, now. And I, uh, I'm actually having a difficult time finding any information on that at all. Uh, so if I can't find it, uh, it's probably not out there. But anyways, uh, yeah, we're going to turn that up a little bit. And... Uh, I'm going to go drive it a little bit, and then I'm going to bring it back in and drop the oil, uh, pull the fuel filter off of it, uh, kind of figure out what I need to get uh, to do the service that I need to do on it. So, uh, oh, and the one other thing I'll do before I do that is I just want to get a, an idea of what kind of compression it's got. Uh, I just have a cheap compression tester, so it's not overly accurate. Um, but it says in the manual, if it's under 90, uh, it should be looked at. And I don't know if it'll come in under 90 or not, uh, but we'll find out. Uh, mainly I want to see if both sides are close to the same, because uh, that might explain our missing issue if one side has got much different compression than the other. So, alrighty, well first thing I'm going to do is crank that, uh, that speed up a little bit. engine speed up a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if it's where it's supposed to be or not yet, um, but uh, I turned it up a little bit. It's still, uh, you know, it's got a lot more snap to it right away, and then uh, as soon as you put load on it, uh, it's not happy. So, uh, and I also noticed it had quite a bit of blow by uh, coming out of the breather hose. Um, so I'm going to let it sit for just a, a little bit here, check the oil level and see uh, if just by chance the oil has been overfilled at some point. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, pull the spark plugs quick, uh, do a compression test, and then we'll drop the oil, uh, take the fuel filter off, spark plugs out, oil filter off. Uh, I don't know if I'll do anything with the hydraulic stuff, but I might as well, probably just because I've got the cover off and it's easier to get to the filter. Um, and we'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully, uh, the compression check, uh, or hopefully, the compression test checks out all right and uh, this motor isn't toast. But uh, I mean, if that's, if that's what it ends up being, that's what it ends up being. Uh, I've got access to an 18 horse V twin, um, but I'm not sure that it would fit very well in the size area that we've got to work with here, but uh, that doesn't mean some things can't be reworked. Uh, so we will see once what happens. Uh, I'm going to let it cool down and uh, check the oil level on it, and uh, we'll go from there. 